Well, good morning and welcome to Dunwoody United Methodist Church. We sure are glad that you're here this morning. My name is Matt Stone. I'm one of the pastors here on staff. And before we get started with our morning, just a couple of things to cover with you. There are burritos and coffee on the back table. If you haven't eaten them, why don't you like Jesus? Uh, I assume that you did, but you don't have a breakfast burrito in your hand, so I'm starting to wonder. There's plenty of food. We hope you'll grab some. Make yourself at home. Also, later in the service this morning, uh, we have something called Spark. Spark is for pre-K through third grade kids. We'll dismiss them in the middle of the service. You'll hear that. It'll be real clear. Uh, and they'll go across the hall, and they'll cover the same content that we're covering in here, but in a way that uh, we believe will uh, speak specifically to them. Now, it's your choice as a family whether or not, if you have kids that age, it's totally your choice. If you want to keep your kids in here with you, we'd love to have them. So uh, make yourself at home in that regard as well. Last but not least, today is a special Sunday. Uh, this is Senior Sunday, and so you will see this morning that we have uh, some of our seniors leading us in worship. You're going to hear them pray. You're going to hear them offer stories about how this church has impacted them, and uh, uh, we will be blessed by their leadership this morning. So we're excited to have you all with us today. So friends, as we get started with worship, would you all stand and greet your neighbor? Say hello to somebody you haven't seen. hear these words out of Psalm 100, or excuse me, out of Psalm 30, that call us in to worship this morning. This is Psalm 30, verse 4. Sing praises to the Lord, O you, his faithful ones, and give thanks to his holy name. For his anger is but for a moment, his favor is for a lifetime. Weeping may linger for the night, but joy comes with the morning. Let's pray. God, we give you thanks this morning for the opportunity to gather in your name. We pray, O God that you might call us into this space, that we might meet you here this morning, that we might leave some of, our, some of our worries and concerns outside for a moment so that we might hear a word from you, so that we might feel the power of your presence in our hearts even now. So we offer this time to you, and we say this is your time and not ours. We pray it in the name of your son, Jesus Christ. Amen. Won't you stand and join us as we worship this morning?
nothing good in me. You are love, you are love on display for all to see. You are light, you are light when the darkness closes in. You are hope, you are hope, you have covered all my sin. peace when my fear is crippling you are true you are true even in my wandering you are joy you are joy you're the reason that i see you are life you are life in you death has lost its sting
As we worship together this morning, we bring our full selves before God in praise and prayer. Will you join me in turning your hearts and minds toward God as we pray? Gracious God, we gather here today to worship you and to praise you for being our stronghold in times of goodness and in times of struggle. You are the God who continues to be a firm foundation and the God who provides us with unconditional love. We thank you for walking with us each and every day and we pray that you will continue to walk with all of us seniors as we approach this new step in our lives. Lord, please provide us with the knowledge and wisdom we need to continue living a life in your name. We pray that you continue to direct us in this next chapter, and we pray that we will never forget your goodness. May your spirit guide and protect us as we go off on our own and help us remember who we belong to. We pray all these things in the name of Jesus Christ, who taught us to pray, saying, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. Lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever. Amen. As we sing our next song, children pre-K through third grade are invited to attend Spark. You can follow Jennifer or meet her in the back of the room to go to children's programming. Let's continue our worship together. Like David in the temple, I want to bring you praise. Like David in his temple plans, your ways are not my ways. You don't need me to build a temple to know that you love me still. Oh. Like Israel on the shore, all I see are crashing waves. Like Israel on the shore, through the wild you make a way. I will go where Stay where you stay, oh, cause I don't want to go if you're not going before me, I don't want to go if you're not going before me, I don't want to go if you're not going before me, I don't want to go if you're not going When I see the land from the mountain top, oh. like Peter on the hill, I want to make this my place. Like Peter on the hill, for your transfigured face, I will go where you go, I will stay where you stay. I don't want to go soul. 
to have our student testimonies today as we celebrate our seniors and their upcoming graduation. And I'd like to uh, invite up Mary Ashley Jacopo and Elena Daniel to come and to be our senior testimony speakers today. Welcome them. Hi, as Phil said, I'm Elena Daniel and I'll be attending the University of Tampa next semester. Um, <laughs> and this is my senior testimony. The love and support that I have been surrounded by during my 18 years at DUMC is indescribable. One thing I know I'm going to miss next year at college is being able to walk into a building like DUMC and instantly be greeted by multiple people who I know love and care for me. I am especially grateful for the small group leaders, Ms. Vanderweel, Allie Benston, Ms. Rohan, Ms. Muter, and Ms. Biger who I've been so fortunate to be led by in my youth years here at Denwood UMC. Through these small groups, I met young adults, friends, and leaders who shaped me into the person I am today. I cannot express enough gratitude to the church for the never-ending love and support that allow these small groups to be formed so that I, along with my peers and the younger youth, could be transformed into int intentional followers of Christ. I must thank all of you as a congregation for building a firm foundation for me, not only as a Christian, but also as a young adult. Thank you. Hi, I'm Mary Ashley Jacopo. I'm a senior, and then I'm going to the University of Georgia next year. So go, dogs! <laughs> um, I have been lucky enough to grow here, grow up here in this church, where my earliest memories consist of being a part of Miss Cindy's um, little cherub choir, being a part of Promise Kids and going to church every Sunday. I want to thank my parents for bringing my brother and I every single week, which sets such a great foundation for us to have our faith um, be able to get built upon. I started to learn about having a relationship with Jesus when I finally got to be a part of youth in sixth grade. I was able to understand that he wanted a relationship with me and that he wasn't just someone I read about in stories. He could do so much more than just the cool things in the Bible. Um, on our confirmation retreat, I also learned what it meant to serve God through our prayers, presence, service, gifts, and witness. And there are two people here at DUMC that truly live out these values every time I see them. These people are Mark Lambach and Ms. Melissa Muter. Um, Mr. Lambach's the youth choir director, so over here. And he's someone who takes his musical gifts. He's just one of the most talented people I know, and he's able to use them and share the gospel with people in such... Um, indescribable ways. And then Ms. Muter, it's my small group leader, and she brings me and my fellow high school um, senior girls to youth every single week. Um, she truly exemplifies Christ by the way she listens to us and her presence. Um, these two people's impact on my life is mainly because they always show up and are there for me. They have shown up just as Christ has done so many times in my life. 
I want to thank this church as well for showing up every Sunday and embracing and encouraging me and my fellow seniors to keep going in our journey of faith. Both. We are incredibly blessed with uh, incre great students, great seniors this year. We'll certainly miss them. And as you head out uh, to Hyde Park United Methodist Church, which is, which is in walking distance of the University of Tampa, my friend McGray de Vega is the pastor there. I will send him your name and you can... The other thing you need to know is you need to tell your parents to take you to Burn Steakhouse. Can I get an amen? Yeah, t tell them that. And uh, University of Georgia, they're getting a new pastor at Athens First Methodist. He's one of my good friends named Jeremy Lawson. You'll want to go and check him out as well. So bless you as you begin that journey. I have a question for the seniors. You, uh, how many of you wish you were 21 today? <laughs> In fact, there was someone who turned 21 years old today and was born in 2004. How is that possible? They turned 21 today and were born in 2004. How is that possible? One graduating senior stood before the class and said, I want to thank the internet, Google, Microsoft Office, and cut and paste for all my academic achievements. <laughs> These seniors have never lived in a world without Google. The IPO was in 2004 and many of you were born in... 2004, maybe 2003, and so you've always had Google. Some of us had to go to a thing called a library. Anybody? <laughs> we used these old dated books called World Books where we got outdated information, and Encyclopedia Britannica was the other, right? And we relied on those for information, so you have been far luckier than we ha are. Uh, we were. Any idea uh, how somebody who was born in 2004 could be 21 years old today? Anybody got it? It was room 2004 at the hospital. We all assumed I meant the year. We all made the mistake of assuming the year 2004, and that's just the way our minds work. That's the way our brains are set up. We hear 2004 associated with a, a, a date, and we assume that they were born in the year 2004, but it was room 2004. We're all going to make mistakes. In fact, everyone in this room has made some glorious mistakes. Some of you even made them today. And in the midst of our mistakes, we sometimes respond with the word oops. Oops. Oops, I made a mistake. Oops, I messed up. Now, where does the term oops come from? Britney Spears is correct. <laughs> Britney Spears is correct. Oops, I did it again. Some of you did it on purpose. Some of you are not that innocent. I understand. <laughs> Still playing that game. But many people think oops comes from throwing a child up in the air and saying ups a daisy, and then it got changed to oops a daisy. And as parents and grandparents and other folks involved in the lives of these students, you probably remember a day not too long ago when you could throw them up in the air and say, oops, oops a daisy. Hopefully not dropping them, but just saying, oops a daisy. Oops, we think comes from that, but I did my Googling. And as I did my Googling, I found an Oregon State researcher who traced the term oops to the great epizootic of 1872. Now, you're going to be able to impress your college friends with this word, epizootic. Try it out. Nobody knows better than our graduating seniors what an epidemic is, right? You know about an epidemic. An epidemic means through the people, through the population. An epizootic then means through the animals. It was the great equine flu of 1872. And that term epizootic got translated as upazuti. And there is an old cartoon that has a horse in it where is the first reference to oops. So it may be that that's where we get oops from. And we're in our sermon series called Beautiful Oops, which is about the idea that God can take the mistakes that we make and redeem them. Because when somebody makes a mistake, we have choices to make ourselves. When someone else makes a mistake, we get to decide what we do next. And one of my favorite 
uh, pictures of that is from the movie Up. Anybody remember watching Up, Pixar film Up? And there's a picture of Carl Fredrickson, and he is admiring his wife, Ellie. She is painting their mailbox, but he has made a mistake. And the mistake is he has put his hand in the paint, and he's caught purple-handed. And now she has a choice to make. She can yell at him for his mistake. She can berate him for his mistake. She can punish him for his mistake. And instead of that, she does this. And she takes his mistake and makes something beautiful from it. That is the kind of God we worship who can take even our worst mistakes and somehow redeem them in beautiful ways. Will you stand to hear the scripture? To, well, don't stand because it's going to be played on the screen. And it's going to be from Brooke Freeman and Calissa Dodderman as they share <laughs> some beautiful oops artwork this day. Far way off. I got this. Worthy to be called your son. But the father said to his slaves, Quickly, bring out a robe, the best one, and put it on him. Put a ring on his finger and sandals on his feet. And get the fatted calf and kill it. And let us eat and celebrate. For this son of mine was dead and is alive again. He was lost and is found. And they began to celebrate. Amen. And it's a beautiful Easter story. He was dead and is alive again. He was lost and now is found. A young man goes to his parents and asks for his share of the inheritance. Today we call that tuition. And after getting that promise of tuition, he goes away to a far country, which we call university or college or joining the military today. And after going away to a far country, he squanders all of his inheritance at frat parties, <laughs> at tailgating, in bar hopping, wherever it might be, dissolute living. Some of you have been there. And after squandering everything in dissolute living, he needs to get a job. Some of you will need to get a job one day. There will be a day when you need to get a job. And just like a year ago when Jonathan came here uh, and Jessica came here a year ago, Jessica didn't need a job as much as Jonathan did. But, you know, we're so grateful to have both of them here. They're here a year this week. We're grateful for your leadership and for Brooks' leadership in leading our student ministries. Dunwoody Youth Ministries is, uh, is in a far better place because of you and because of your leadership. Thank you, thank you, thank you so much. It's been a great year. It's been a great year. And so he squandered everything. And after squandering everything, he needed a job. And he got the worst job you could ever get for a young Jewish boy slopping pigs. And he's slopping pigs. And as he's slopping pigs, he thinks to himself... 
these pigs are eating even better than I am. I would gladly eat some of the pods that the pigs were eating. He had been to too many dining service meals and decided that this would be far better. And then the scripture tells us this. It says he came to. He woke up. He came to himself. And when he came to, when he woke up, he came to himself and he thought, I could still go home again. I could still go home again. And when he thinks he can go home again, he starts rehearsing in his mind. He starts rehearsing in his mind all the mistakes that he's made. And he wonders if he'll ever be accepted when he goes back home again. He wonders what's going to be said when he decides to turn around and go back home. How will they respond to the mistakes that he has made in his life? How will they respond to his mistakes? Will they yell at him? Will they punish him? Will they berate him? And so he begins rehearsing his confession. And he's, he must have said it over and over again as he walked home. I have sinned before God and before you, my father. I've, I, I'm not worthy to be called your son. Treat me as one of your hired servants. And I think he must be repeating that over and over and over again. And yet we all make mistakes. Last year at graduation at USC. Any USC grads here? Last year at graduation at USC, the president of the university stood up and after they had moved their tassels from one side to the other, he said, I want to congratulate you as being the newest graduates of the University of California. It was University of South Carolina, not even Southern California. He still has a job. You can have your mistakes redeemed. God has a wonderful way of doing that, of taking our mistakes and making something beautiful out of them. Back in 1930, there was a woman named Ruth Wakefield, and she ran an inn on the turnpike between Bedf New Bedford, Massachusetts, and Boston. And she was in a hurry one day trying to make chocolate cookies, and she didn't have the right kind of chocolate that she usually melted into the batter, so she grabbed some semi-sweet chocolate and broke it into chunks and put it in the batter, knowing that it would then melt, and if it would melt it would make great chocolate cookies. She came back and pulled them out of the oven and that chocolate had not melted into the cookies but had sort of stayed together and she accidentally, accidentally, by mistake, invented the... And the name of the place where she had the inn? The Toll House. The Toll House Inn. And today... We eat about 7 billion chocolate chip cookies a year based on what happened accidentally to this woman. And they say half of the cookies baked in America are chocolate chip cookies in people's homes. And so for each of the seniors today, I have a chocolate chip cookie, a homemade chocolate chip cookie, to remind you that even the mistakes that we make, God can turn into something beautiful. This young man is worried about the mistakes that he has made. And he rehearses his mistakes over and over and over again in his head. But he turns around. He comes to himself and starts to make his way back home. And when he starts to make his way back home, the scripture tells us that while he was still a far way off, while he was still a far way off, his father saw him. And when his father saw him, he said, he was going to run to see his son, but fathers in that day did not run. It was not dignified. You didn't run because in order to run, you had to gird your loins. And does anybody know how to gird their loins? Is that something they teach you in high school? To gird your loins in those days, to be able to run, they all wore long robes like this. I don't usually wear a robe like this in this service, but I had to be able to show you what it meant to gird your loins. So to gird your loins... This might be a mistake. <laughs> to gird your loins, you reach below and grab the back of your robe and you pull it up and then you tuck it in your belt. For pants. And this is the kind of love 
that God has for each and every one of us. A God who would be this undignified. A God who is willing to give up their dignity and is willing to run to us. And so the father in this story runs and grabs his child and hugs them and kisses them and says, go get the best robe, which would have been his, and go get the family ring, which would have been his, and go get the fatted calf, because we're going to have the biggest, best. You'll never forget this, will you? (laughs) You'll have the biggest, best graduation party ever because he has graduated from being self-centered. He's graduated from being self-interested. Now, I have a secret to tell the seniors. Look around this room. Some of these people have gone to a far country. Some of these people in this room have wasted their inheritance in dissolute living. Don't raise your hands. (laughs) Some of the people in this room, though, I would say all the people in this room at some point came to themselves. At some point realized being there in the mud and the muck and the mire was not who that they were called to be. And they turned back toward home. They turned back toward the Lord's table. They turned back toward God. And when God saw them just make even that whiff of a turn, God ran toward them that undignified God who loved them more than anything. Friends, you seniors in high school, I want you to leave your mistakes here this morning at this table, and I'll leave mine. (laughs) I want you to leave your mistakes here at this table, and I want you to go into college and make better mistakes. Neil Gaiman said it this way, now go and make interesting mistakes. Make amazing mistakes. Make glorious and Fantastic mistakes. Break some rules. Leave the world more interesting for you being here. And please know that you are always welcome home to this table, to this place. As Publix said it very well with their recent table ad. We all have our faults. Our quirks. Some of you have more quirks than others. Our little imperfections. <laughs> but here at this table, we are always welcome. It's the craziest thing. This is where battles are waged. I'm not supposed to say anything. Lives are shaped. It's okay. And lessons are learned. You just gotta. Well, we can brush away the dust of the day and finally just be. For this is more than just a table. This is a table of forgiveness and grace, where the love of God and the forgiveness of God will not berate you for your mistakes. Sometimes we're punished more by our mistakes than for for them. Not be punished for your mistakes, but you will be able to come and have your mistakes redeemed in a beautiful way. I invite you to bring your mistakes to the table, to receive the forgiveness of God and go from this place, knowing that you are always welcome, always welcome at this, the Lord's table. In the name of the Father and of the Son, And of the Holy Spirit, let us pray. Gracious and loving God, we give you thanks for your willingness to run toward us, even when we haven't always been who you've called us to be. Help us, especially our graduating seniors, to remember who they are and whose they are, to remember the love and the care that was given to them while they were in this place, and help them to know that no matter what tables they may have sat under during their years in a far country, no matter what the table of their home might be like, that this table, your table, is always here to welcome them home and to offer them the sweet taste of forgiveness. Hear their prayers for the day ahead. Keep them safe and keep them strong as they seek to be your people, even while making mistakes. In your gracious name we pray. Amen. Friends, the meal that we are about to share is a homecoming. It's a homecoming for those who have traveled far off. 
It's a homecoming for those who didn't leave at all. It's a homecoming because in this meal we find Christ and we come together. So friends, before we share this meal, just a couple words of instruction. If you didn't receive communion elements on your way in, if you'll raise your hand, our ushers are around. They would be glad to bring you uh, the communion elements. Uh, and second, this meal doesn't belong to Dunwoody United Methodist Church. It doesn't belong to the United Methodist Church. This meal belongs to God. And so anybody who can respond to the invitation that I'll offer here in a few moments is welcome to receive and to participate. Friends, on the night that Jesus was betrayed, he took bread and he broke it. He gave it to his disciples and he said, take, eat. This is my body which is broken for you. Do this as often as you eat it in remembrance of me. And after the supper, Jesus took the cup, he gave thanks, he gave it to his disciples and he said, take, drink. This is the blood of the new covenant shed for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Do this as often as you drink it in remembrance of me. Let's pray together. Oh God, I pray that you would pour out your Holy Spirit on this community that's gathered here. Pour out your Spirit upon these gifts of bread and cup. Make them be for us the body and blood of Christ that we might be your body, redeemed by your blood. Oh God, we pray that you would make us one with each other, one with you, and one in ministry to the entire world. We pray all this in the name of the Father, in the name of the Son, and in the name of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Friends, for those who confess their sin, for those who confess that Christ is Lord, for those who come seeking grace, this table is open to you. If you would at this time remove the top layer of cellophane and receive the body, knowing that this is the body of Christ broken for you. you'll then remove the second layer of cellophane and receive the cup knowing that this is the blood of Christ shed for you. Let's pray together. Oh God, we give you thanks. We're grateful, oh God, that you have poured yourself out for us yet again. Oh God, I pray that, you, that we might be so filled by your presence, that we might be so satisfied by your grace and love that we, that we might return into the world, ready to serve you and to serve each other, ready to be the men and women that you made us to be. We pray all this in the name of your son, Jesus Christ. Amen. Friends, as we continue in worship this morning, I want to invite Deacon Copeland up. Good morning. morning. On this Senior Sunday, we are so thankful for all the ways that you have been a part of making our youth experience at UMC possible. Your faithfulness and generosity have helped to create space for us to equip with our gratitude throughout our faith journeys and to feed our souls and our bodies. If you want to continue to uplift the next generation ministries at Dona United Methodist, there are several ways you can do so. Support us with your financial gifts by giving in the offering basket or online following the instructions on the screen. You can also get involved in person by reaching out to our youth staff, Jessica, Jonathan, or Brooke. We are so grateful for the many ways you support us. Thank you.
What a great group of seniors. We have some that we would especially like to recognize. We were able to give out scholarships because of the generosity of this church, uh, members of this church, past and uh, present. We are able to give out 11 scholarships uh, to those who have applied. Uh, and I'm going to ask if they're here to stand. Adam Frederick. Elena Daniel. Ab Ansley Gavlik. Claire Muter. Deacon Copeland. Josie Dunkerley, Lainey Birdhoff, Mary Ashley Jacopo, she went back over here, Sam Woodrow, Shelby Rutherford, and Leland Ife. Uh, stay standing. I got some helpers here. They said they would help me with cookies, but uh, they, are you going to help me? Okay, make sure, I'll take some cookies and make sure they all get cookies if they're standing up, okay? And will the rest of our seniors please stand so they can also get some cookies. There you go. You're welcome. He already got one. One more time, let's hear for these seniors. I'll invite them to be seated. I know they love being the center of attention. Uh, but if you'll reach out your hand toward them, if they're in your row or they're near you, and let us pray over them as we go forth from this place. Gracious and loving God. We give you thanks for all that they have accomplished and all that they will accomplish. We trust that they are going to change the world. And so may they go forth from the strength that they have found in this place. And may you take their successes and make them even more fruitful. And may you take their mistakes and redeem them in ways that they can't even yet imagine. Help them to always know that they have a place here at your table for you are the God who runs towards us. Bless them, keep them, strengthen them. Be with their families as they let go in these challenging days. In your name we pray and give thanks for your good news for us. In the name of the Father, Son, and the Holy Spirit, we give thanks. Amen. Will you stand and lift your voices in our closing benediction song? And if you did not get a list of the graduating seniors... You can grab that with all their pictures on your way out this day. Oh, Holy Ghost, hold us together. Bless us and keep us. And grant us peace. Wonderful Father, come shine upon us favor and teach us love until we return let us live deep within our hearts and help us love justice and reach out our hands to comfort those us and keep us and grant us peace. Wonderful Father, come shine upon us. Show us favor in Jesus' name. Amen. Go in peace.